let's open the floor to some questions. Uh, Elena, thank you very much for your talk. And we have a similar study, uh, but we completed uh, before when we have similar results, so it was a great But I want to ask another thing, which is with the change of uh, production from traditional to semi intensive and intensive uh, uh, grape wines and olive trees we change a drama the dramatically in terms of what you use because now everything, more than 85% of the olives are produced with irrigation. So do you have any idea or someone has an idea in terms of when we change from traditional use to these intensive fields, how much did these changes contribute to soil erosion, for instance? It's not easy. Uh, of course, if you have irrigated uh, olive groves or vineyards, you don't have problems of uh, production because you are controlling the water that is plants are using. But in Spain, at least, we are in the limit of the use of irrigation because we don't have water. So we cannot continue spreading the irrigated plants. So this uh, possibility cannot be used. Oh. Mm. But you cannot. But we have a limit. No. We have a limit. Absolutely. Because in other case we would uh, consume the groundwater. We have a lot of the problems on us. So this possibility, I think, is not uh, environmentally <coughs> available. <coughs> And when we can, uh, I think that uh, an olive grove is, is very similar to a Montero, to a Teresa. It can be used with corn. There's uh, the vineyards are more sensitive to cover crops than the olive crops. It is a question of management. If you cut frequently. But we have to think about the long term. We have to be able to maintain the resources for the long term, not uh, a lot of money in the short term. This is great. Okay, question. Yeah. Short question. You showed us uh, at the beginning of your presentation some very nice uh, example of gallic erosion. But then uh, you compare your treatment in terms of surface erosion. I would say that uh, these are two very different phenomena. Are you confident that uh, the measure you suggest, uh, the grass cover, can prevent also cow erosion? Yes, we have also cover crops in olive groves. And the difference are... <coughs> Not in olive groves, I mean in uh, cow erosion. If you use uh, erosion clothes, you cannot have bullets. You, even you cannot have wheels because the rainfall has not time and length enough to form yes. to be for Yes, but the question was, are you confident that uh, the grass cover can prevent the garden erosion? Yes, because we have seen this in olive groves. Olive groves with cover crops don't have erosion in the area where the cover crops are. <coughs> You have bullets in the area of the trees, in the, on the surface under the trees, because you don't have plants there to facilitate the collection of olives. So it is that. Okay. Uh, I have a question about the growth yield. So you, you, you said that uh, usually uh, when uh, you put the uh, glass cover, there is uh, uh, a reduction, but sometimes uh, uh, there is uh, an improvement. But you did not, did not tell more about this, but this is the first question. So if you could explain in which cases you, you get uh, uh, no reduction. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the, the second question is, uh, how long did you uh, study this uh, crop uh, yet? Because, uh, uh, Maybe it's just a question of time. If you uh, just uh, because to recover an ecosystem takes a long time, long period. So maybe it's 
just the first years, the first, the second, the first, and after you would have uh, an increase of the earth. Uh, if you, an increase of? Uh, of the crop, yeah. Also, also if you have uh, crop, yes. maybe it's just uh, to take uh, more time <coughs> for the uh, ecosystem, our ecosystem to recover the production. Yes. Uh, it's uh, just a <coughs> yes, yes. hypothesis. The problem is uh, the uh, length of the project. You have projects for four years, so you finish this project. It's really, we need to study this kind of things for a longer Question. Only I would like to say that the best soil uh, is able to uh, stand for the water consumption of the cover crops. I mean that if the soil is more degraded, the cover crops are more dangerous for them. In the case of soil moisture, and it takes longer, the time is longer, but you need, you need longer time to obtain benefits. But in each case, it's the instead of... And another thing, uh, the older vineyard <coughs> is the best one, because maybe you cannot use this kind of common crops in young vineyards. You can wow. use them in old vineyards, because they can resist the presence of common crops. Question. Chris Atkinson, University of Greenwich. You didn't mention anything about <coughs> nitrogen fixing with cover crops. I wonder if growers were aware that they could get a lot of their nitrogen costs from their cover crop. They might be more inclined to use cover crops. We used lens suculenta at the beginning as a luminose plant, <coughs> but it was an organic vineyard. So it was uh, invade, invaded by spontaneous vegetation, so we couldn't measure nitrogen. We found that there is an increase in, um, <coughs> if you measure the nitrogen and organic matter and phosphorus in the sediment, in the sediment yield, it is almost two times higher in the sediment than in the soil. So you are losing nutrients. A very quick point before we go to the next speaker. In Spain and in Portugal, there is a movement away from farming, land abandonment, large scale. The question is, is someone monitoring what is happening to the abandoned land and the rate of change uh, of, of such lands? A very quick point. So. It's a quick point, but it's <laughs> really important. And I would like to have a 10 years or 20 years yeah. project to, to know that because we really don't know. I have shown you several features of abandoned lands. It takes a long time to know what's happening with this, and it depends on the climate. If you have several years with high rainfall, it can recover. But if you have drought period, because you lose this, the land. Because of a few hundred years of agro-pastoral landscape, which is very delicate balance, and therefore when you move away, you then may have too much recovery of shrubs, etc., more risk of fire. Uh, so these are those questions. So we'll leave it at that and then we'll yes. get to the next I'm speaker. sorry we have to just carry on, but um, those of you the, coming to the meeting is, uh, tomorrow and when you go to the Millennium Seed Bank, you'll, you'll be able to ask more questions. Okay. So we're moving on now uh, to, to Major. And um, I'd like to introduce <coughs> Professor Jinping Wang. Uh, he's from China, of course, and from the, this is, uh, I've got to get this right, because it's the longest name of an institution I've ever known. <laughs> uh, the Shabatu, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but Desert Experimental Research Station, Cold and Arid Regions, Environmental and Engineering Research Institute, China, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, actually, when, when um, we approached Jinping to uh, see whether he was willing to come all the way from um, China to come and talk to us today. I, I did go and have a look at Google Map, and I wish I actually, I, I brought it, I would have brought it up, because it, it, it looks like an amazing place on the edge of some sand dunes, isn't it? Some big dune, dune kind of uh, um, geography. So that's really kind of uh, an interesting place. And uh, Jinping's going to um, talk to us 
uh, about uh, restoration, I think, in, uh, in uh, case studies and efforts to combat desertification in China. And we're looking really forward to it, and I'm, I'm really pleased that you've come, Jinping, all the way from China to talk to us today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bent. I'm honored to be here. I'm really happy to have this time to tell uh, my research story. But uh, please be noting that in China, to combat that case is a long history. And what I'm doing, and I have done, is one person, one thousand <laughs> of that, I think. So, uh, referring to the name of my institute, formally we have two or three research institutes in Nanjiu. Uh, they emerged in 1989. So, we want to cover every topic of the formal research institutes, then this is kicked off. Okay. <laughs> but after that, the experiment we said will be famous. Now I'll go to the uh, text. Uh, please remind me if I go through the time, the time of the story, the story and time, and I'll go quickly. Uh, three subjects, and for the case study is what I'm doing. And the effort to combat uh, to the classification is somewhat uh, the combat story. We must find the suggestion for our uh, course action of uh, S0014. Let's take a look of the test, uh, test kitchen in China. Uh, normally, we divide it in with the bio, bio, or bio neutrality, like the hyper-arid and arid, uh, semi-arid, uh, some humid areas, like one, two, three, and four in this uh, map. And we have four biggest uh, deserts. We don't do anything with this desert if they exist there for thousands of billions of years, uh, years. But for this area, they have some disaster caused by this the improvement to the farmland or to the high highway and the infrastructure. So we must do something in this area. This is deep, deep area to I think in the year 2000, they have a report for the uh, the situation of the test kitchen areas in China, we divide it in different uh, extents, like the wind erosion, water erosion, and uh, the severe and media and light and uh, like uh, this. We divide it, and this is uh, the common published uh, result. I think you can find that on internet. This is important figures here. This says we have succeeded somehow. The 35 to 95 degrees since last for uh, last five years. They report they document this figure every five years. So they calculate from 2000 and 1995 uh, like that. And compared with those in 2004, over the past five years, the testified net have increased by 12,000 square kilometers, with an average reduction of 2,000 square kilometers, and the 75 net <coughs> reduction was 8,000 square kilometers, with an average uh, reduction of 1,000 square kilometers. So they divide the testified and the sanctified in two categories. I don't understand that, but I, I guess the testified is relatively light and severe for the man vegetation. And the sanctified area maybe is uh, there is existing test there. But we divide this existing test area with uh, Stabilized, semi-stabilized, and uh, motivated, or some migrating same, same land. <laughs> and uh, refer to the testified land area, we classified it 
uh, according to the different type zone or the type of the classified land uh, in different uh, climate areas, the, the, the areas roughly account it's uh, some one third of the uh, areas in standard uh, uh, and then in the dry subhumid areas is uh, less than 20 percent. In the arid areas is uh, 45. And on the right of your there is a different sand land uh, areas. We call it it's a sand patch land and fixed land, sand land and semi fixed some shifting land sand land land. And uh, the the Kobe desert included in here and uh, the water is all there is uh, water is all eroded and weed eroded. Some I think it's overlap, but uh, this is uh, the rough uh, figures. And the type of the desert land we we have the the wind erosion is the main cause of the this type of the desert land. And the free soil uh, now <coughs> now this area still get uh, more attention because of the tablet uh, uh, the, the the railway. Construct that area, and the human activities will be uh, increased. There is more pressure on this area, so the flowing, right flows and flowing areas, uh, of course, uh, the best part areas will be uh, make more problem in the local area for the block development. And uh, this, this is the status of the. That's the bad land uh, for, from water erosion and to meat erosion. And uh, on the right, on the right hand of uh, this figure, count uh, the, uh, the the areas for the wind erosion caused it is uh, about 8,000 square kilometers, and uh, the freeze point is less than 10 percent. 10 square kilometers. Here we go to the, the sanctified land. If we look at the main three types of the sanctified land, the, we can find the fixed dunes increased uh, in those years, and the shifting dunes and the semi fixed dunes <laughs> still there's for the right hand. The, 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 the minus uh, characters means that uh, they still uh, have a less effect, a negative effect to the society. Uh, some slides show the, uh, the phenomena uh, in this area, what we call the uh, mean pneumonia, and uh, we call steep and thick. And uh, uh, in the, the reverse side, and uh, I think it should be fine. Uh, I'll fix it. And uh, all kind of the testified land uh, along the railway and uh, expressway and highway, and the right areas on the top of the right. Thanks. And this is a cosage for the human activity for the testifier land. And uh, now, as the important thing is to, we want to use some resources from this service to make the construction through the, uh, the harsh environment, which may cause testified land. Here, the second part of the study. Oh, the first, I'm sorry. We do experiment here since last, uh, last century, from the uh, 1950s. Uh, it's called the you Tender know, Desert. Why we do this? Because that is a mission to construct the railway, combine the land to and port to the main industrial city together to, uh, to make a 
uh, improvement of the economy in, in the new country. Then, I show you where it is. Because that's support to uh, go back. You can say only one river. That's the uh, uh, river. <coughs> and uh, Nanjo, uh, it's 300 kilometers uh, lost based of uh, Sabato. My institute is located in Nanjo. And our research station is in, in Sabato. That's a technical uh, city. Uh, here, the Nanjo River comes to this way. And this, this is the uh, railway. We construct the railway to go through the shifty desert area for almost 40 kilometers. That's a big canyon. Now we establish this field research station. This uh, 1955, I think. We can have a clear look of this little time when the young river was here. Maybe you can use a question. If you educate the design, you the young river, it's easy. But to be honest, we, in this area, we do uh, use the young river to educate this uh, uh, revertition uh, system. We may, may, may have a refed system. And I will go to the climate and it will be made. And the rock, uh, that's the picture. Uh, okay. okay. We want to com combine uh, the linkage between the globe scene and destination and biodiversity loss. Here, we do take the product from uh, this existence. This existence service is to protect, we just protect this uh, railway to go smooth. And they, they supply the ecosystem services to this environment, make no more money. But we can calculate from the, the, the loss if we see that's the income. <coughs> what the scope of our research is uh, the station that includes this aspect, mainly the best environment. We want to understand. What the environment, the climate, the, the wind conditions, and the rainfall, uh, and also at this climate effect. The dust is the main thing here. To, if we step down the surface, the dust come with seed and fine particles and by cell by, by, uh, the cell bacteria to form the biological crust. And the cell by plants, soil, water, village and equality. My main research field is related to this cause. The, the what, which is the main constraining factor here to limit <coughs> the possibility to establish this comparison system. And uh, the other is vegetation dynamics and, and storage ecology. And uh, biologic soil grass and soil ecology and so on. Here we call the basic information of this, uh, this area. We have rainfall every less than 200 millimeters per year. And you can look on the left. Almost the most part of the year is the dry season. Only in early August we have rainfall above the average uh, 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 temperature. And the wind direction and wind speed are rippling. The maximum one, the wind speed reached 8 <laughs> meters per second. And the main direction is from northwest in the wind time and early spring. In summer, the, 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 the wind will come from the southeast. That, that makes the, the dune crest move and go back like this. But mean, it will be. Uh, go south, southward directly uh, for every year uh, 6.3 uh, millimeters like that. And we also do some investigation for the vegetation, competition species, and the coverage, and so on. 
And I, I will show you the result for yes. such a uh, result. Here is the last picture for the biology of soil rust. Sometimes you can see you uh, regard it as a negative phenomenon, cause it increases runoff or it causes uh, water erosion. But here I can see the biology of soil rust is um, the main point uh, for the uh, succession of the existing system. And initially, <coughs> we put straw checkboard. And the size of the straw checkboard, I om <coughs> omitted. The, that's a long time of experiment to, to decide which size of the straw checkboard and how much material will be used in each square. We, we want to save see money and see the neighborhood. So, firstly, some two meters and to, to see what the stock, the, the wind will be decreased and uh, the roughness increased. So, after several years, years of ex experiment, we now get the optimal result. This one square meters for the structure people. Then, we replant some seedlings of the straw and uh, both straw in the square. Then the grass will come, the grass will, the seed uh, with uh, dust uh, and air uh, sediment. They will be sitting in the emergence and establish itself. Then to this stage, we see the step line. And the surface composed of high heterogeneous mix of orient materials, plant mount, and interspecies and biological <coughs> grass. So we do uh, experiment and investigation annually, each month or each uh, half month as you like. Uh, as for the water, <coughs> The groundwork here is below 8 meters in the center. So it, it is not useful to the plant growth. Only the rainfall is the only source to support this system. If we establish this system, what the rainfall, the, this 200 millimeter rainfall can, can go into the field, to the root zone, to support this, the, the growth of the crop. It's, uh, uh, the main question must be answered. So we do some experiments for the interception loss and uh, flow flow and stem flow and infiltration and uh, the related soil hydraulic teams and so on. This is a menu. And for the soil hydraulic and then uh, we take the and disturb samples in the field and do experiment in the laboratory to get the, uh, the water retention characteristics of curves and uh, some other factors. And we also measure the infiltration processes below the ground to 2 meters and uh, to see how, how the water evaporates and uh, store it there with, with uh, TTR and PF uh, meters. Again, we do the experiment for the evaporation with a not automatic weed weed lessimit. Yeah. Since nine eight nine. Till now we have more than twenty years uh, the data commission to, to, to make sure if the different kind of the shrub in this area with different density, <coughs> the both composition, and compared to the pair, the step listening to the pair. <coughs> this is a placement of the, the, the wind system uh, here to say what the what requirement the evapotranspiration per year with the variation of the precipitation and other factors. Here we pay an amendment for the stem flow and uh, tie to this uh, experiment to, to see if 
if those stand, stand for the 15 concentric percent flow and goes to the root system with the with this uh, proper preferable flow. As for different kinds of the shops. Uh, this is at least here the form wise of Karkar Kosinski and the two main drops here. <coughs> now we get to the result here. For more than 40 years, investigation was found the shrub coverage increased since the, the initial 10 years. Uh, so, I go this one. Let's show that from the very beginning there is no shrub and uh, we replant that and it goes the carpet reached its maximum value to 70% then it goes down to less than 9 or 8 and then we go to this side. and the herbage the grass and herbage have increased with the fluctuation of the alien leaf. <coughs> and the number of the species here, yeah, all together with the shrub and some grasses, increased to 12 or 40 now. And we have the root system and the distribution of the root <coughs> to the 2 meters uh, in depth. And we have to concentrate the high density of the root you know, for the this is a problem. And the infiltration process, uh, we take into account of the rainfall amount and intensity. If we have same amount of the uh, rainfall and for the left and uh, the right figures are different uh, infiltration uh, content. Then for this one, it has uh, a high intensity, around 5 point millimeters per hour, and this is less than 0.5 millimeters. And this is a decimeter result for the evapotranspiration of those two uh, shrubs and evaporation for the bare area, very with the fit. This patient uh, from the, uh, the late March of the uh, end of, of, of October, this is the growing season in, in this area. And the little chart, the TP. The next meter we have, the next meter for three meters in depth, and uh, the area, the one without a uh, plant, we, we measured. The Victor, the tippet in below this depth. And for the uh, reverted level, the, the Nesbit, there's no tipping happen of course. And if we have 208 millimeters of uh, rainfall during this growing season, uh, there is uh, this amount of the Victor to 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 tippet to the groundwater. And uh, we, if uh, uh, the rainfall is around 200 millimeters, um, we have less than 8 millimeters of the time. What does it mean? If we do have uh, the plant, those what will be lost go down below the, uh, this steps. If we have this plant grow here, we can use this amount of water. And again, for, uh, this is a typical one year in 2002, I think, we remember the, the, the soil moisture in, in this in this week. It averaged for the two, three meter steps. And uh, you can see the black triangle lines shows the, the bare meter 
when the storm loads are always higher than, not always, <coughs> yeah. So ten, but after I think the the peak of the the growth, the, the plant will cause to dominate the, during this stage, and uh, the soil loads will be increased if we have some high rainfall. <coughs> and again here is the evapotranspiration and the evaporation uh, during this year, and uh, this. Uh, this is a blue, a blue line. I have to green or blue. This is a recharge uh, from the non-vegetated non area. We regression from the reversal mission with the info, we get this. That means in the reverted area, 8% of the precipitation will be consumed by the evapotranspiration. And for the bad area, 55% of the rainfall will be removed by the surface. And uh, we use the Matisse, uh, I think it's adjusted in this uh, uh, equation with, uh, with the soil moisture <coughs> in two levels. 20 centimeters and 60 centimeters. We, we, we counted that because the root system will be concentrated in those two uh, layers. And uh, we get this compared with the next bit, uh, result. Here is the stem flow. For those two straps, a weak one can be that with more stem flow which can contribute to the soil moisture. We found that the carbon consciousness scheme has a high stand for always uh, if I'm the same rainfall uh, compared to the, this administrative person. And uh, the power ratio, power ratio I, I think the power ratio can be represented for the canopy kind of structure and the rainfall properties. Then, I regress this to the central code like this. Here for the slabs to to form I the fertility of island. If we compare the rainfall, the concentration of the rainfall here and the stand flow and the flow flow between uh, this is a different uh, uh, amount of the concentration. Okay, okay this is uh, that, that runs for different seasons. The spring, um, summer, and autumn. During the week, we think that. And this is uh, and, uh, this different uh, Right, I got this what balance uh, questions. So then, I'll go quickly to the back here. I want to point out the government. No, no, no. Go back. Skip it. No, no, no. Go back. We have time. Go back. 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 Go show you uh, how to do with this uh, fixation. If we use other materials, it will cost it. And the uh, environment depends on this other piece. That's what I call like that. Okay. Here we use a uh, cone, cone, a metal clay. We clap with the Norway, Norway is each upper two. And there is clay, some kind of the material for to, 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 to do. But we do to use the chemical, like plastic and other things. <coughs> it will be called coal. And that's protect for the kernels. And uh, here, is if, if, if it's enough, most enough, we have enough rainfall or some groundwork to support the uh, thing, you can, you can intercourse, uh, intercourse, intercourse this uh, with, like that. Okay? If the 
uh, normal kind of news, the kind of the this week. That is all of the north of China, north of the north, because of the south of the And the other thing, we conserve the natural, the natural, native species by uh, establishing the, the National Reserve Park. It's important in China, we have hundreds of uh, areas like this. Uh, so we believe the green pressure and the uh, disturbance from other tribes and they use how to use this Gobi Desert and uh, uh, we make countries uh, what matters, high quality. And uh, the harvest time will be uh, near the mass. And here in Papua do we use the uh, Equipment from Israel that fail. It gets the best. That's a lot of story. <coughs> okay, that's all. And um, increase the awareness of local farmers. We have some international visitors. Yeah. And you can that with Mexico. This model was applied to uh, other areas in China. This is in Taklamaka, the Hari. Why we do this? There is oil. They irrigate with saliva. Some suggestion. I want to put the government, local government, what, we, what the, in China we do. It's a long story. And you can see, we have so many. <laughs> Now that's the most good. This is the desert reversal and the control. The law in China authorized in 2001 and uh, the protect for the environment protection law and the forest and the forest laws, uh, water and soil grown. All those was established by the local government. We established some more warning system and uh, the pub published with uh, weather broadcast. And uh, <coughs> this is policy. So encourage people to be involved in this uh, activity to protect and uh, prevent the education. Okay. <coughs> um, I think we go to the last. Uh, based on this scheme of MA, I read that this was an integrated approach to make income of the government by those steps to increase the soil volume and to improve the natural environment, climate and habitat and soil nutrients. All this, this increases the stability and uh, social and policy step. <coughs> Uh, the future work, uh, I think, is, I'm sorry, it's too... Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Mm. Uh, The conference here was entitled Desert Bite, but you can see it's a big desert bite over there. Uh, okay. I'll open the, some uh, questions to the audience. Uh, okay. Just you identify yourself? Just, you know? Yes. Um, I'm uh, Kate Hardwick from uh, World Botanic Gardens, Kew. Um, I'm just wondering if you could tell us where you were planning to go next and if you could tell us a bit Next, the next winter, we have water, 
as well, you know. We took the kids. It depends on the, on the reef. If we have, if we are lucky. Did you say it was 200 millimeters? Yes, yes. 200 Question. Yeah. Last question. It was, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Ask question. Is, I was a little. I got a little bit lost with regard to some of your. You, you showed some slides that it's, it, it was the maximum rainfall in all of your studies 200 millimeters. Because you showed some that it seemed more like it would be much more. Because it was very green, lush vegetation. Oh, yeah, yeah. At least it appeared that way. <laughs> and and my, my question sort of is, I, I got a little lost about how much was actually reclamation of land that previously, what that human activity or climate or combinations have actually uh, degraded the land versus, like you mentioned, restoration of the Gobi Desert. Well, that is naturally arid. And there's, just like in Israel, they talk a lot about, it's a small criticism, but they talk about reclaiming the Negev Desert, but what they're really talking about is colonizing the Negev Desert in very clever ways of allowing humans to live there and make use of the natural resources. So, like the Ebenary's farm where they capture the water runoff and all that. That's not desertification research. Yeah. So I wasn't real sure how much of yours was actually <coughs> desertification research funded by the government versus, or let's say, reclamation research versus how much was actually a little bit of both, maybe? Okay, this is two aspects of the story. The first one, for my study, we do such revertation to stabilize the desert. We do, want, we do not want to have all the desert to stabilize. We just if we want to use this area, we said that we, it depends on the, moon, the, the, the climate, the natural conditions, uh, based on the ecological principles. We can of the species, the native species can adapt to this uh, to, to grow their own. We, we make introduction of the species, species introduction experiment. This is the um, other form to increase the income of local, local farmers, like in Gobi, or some board of the side. We will protect the environment, the living there. We want to maintain if the house, the, the yard will be covered by the desert. We want to stop that. And then, uh, at the same time, you must increase, uh, improve the living standard for the local farmers. Uh, otherwise, you will, you will <laughs> so that's another story. And uh, for the government, uh, you, if you can have this high value of the product, like, like this fruit and other um, vegetables, if possible, we want to 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 introduce the and uh, to show the farmer what we can get from this activity. It was very interesting. I, I, Thank you. The question about the rainfall again. So the average rainfall in the area was at least 200 millimeters, but does it increase in different areas between 200 and 400 or 200, 300? Uh, do you have that information? Uh, those days, uh, I think the climate change in North China, we have so more. Now, just right now, the present situation in the area is 200 millimeters. 200 millimeters, okay. average. <laughs> average. But in the, the highest, we have 549, I think, in 1978. But the, the driest year, less than 100. It's 74 in 90, a year before the really plant of green. It fluctuates so quickly. I noticed in the climate graph that the average minimum temperature in some of the winter months was minus 10 or so, yeah, which yeah. reminds me why I left Canada. So we can move to all the uh, farm, <laughs> just um, to grass. But then is there some snow? Is there uh, yeah, snow? yeah, we have. Which snow? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the picture for the end to ski. Right. That, that's the, the last time. In autumn, it's unusual, we have snow. Usually we have snow in February. How many centimeters per year approximately of snow would there be on average? Uh, 
snow is around 10, 20 centimeters. Around yes. 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 We have more snow. Okay. Yes. Question? Yes. Uh, thanks. I don't have a question for uh, Dr. Wang, but I have a general comment on the uh, presentation that we hear. And I believe that the, the, the late motive of uh, all the presentation that we hear this morning and this afternoon, and according to my opinion, the late motive, motive is called money. And we hear the very nice speech from uh, James uh, Reynolds about, and he, he show us <laughs> an excellent uh, picture of, of uh, <coughs> A rich farm from the last century that became poor farmers after uh, um, land degradation. And this talks also about the problem linked to the quinoa, the cultivation in the Antoclano. And also, also, Elena um, <coughs> spoke about the, 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 the contrast between irrigated oasis areas and the non irrigated lands, non irrigated soilscapes. And uh, Klaus Keller spoke about the, the, the contrast between uh, urban areas and rural areas. And also Maria Marquez spoke about the problems linked to land transformation and land management. And I believe that all these aspects are linked to money. And because of, uh, I believe that money is the only one term that the, the normal people can understand. Uh, I believe also that we, our effort should be uh, concentrated not only to study uh, soil degradation process, soil uh, desertification process, and also to indicate the way in which to avoid, but uh, we uh, um, should concentrate our effort also in indicate how much is the value of the soil that I am degrading, that I am losing. Uh, I mean, <coughs> I have uh, to have uh, eight tons or <laughs> hectares of soil that I lose. It's not money that the farmer lose, but the whole mankind, the whole society lose money. So I believe that we must concentrate our effort in the next few futures, uh, also in demonstrating the amount of the mm, money that I lose in soil degradation processes. Good point. We'll just make them an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the same in, in engineering, in architecture. If you have to do things in, in, in an environmentally friendly way, um, then you have to prove to the client uh, that it's, it's beneficial in terms of cost. And you can do that, so I don't agree with you. OK. I think we better break off there, because the time is out. It's running out. Thank you very much. You really enjoyed it. Coffee. Okay, you're all invited for tea and coffee next door again, and we'll.